there. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited you're here. Likewise. You are one of my favorite actors of all time. Well, you know we are very, very dear old friends, Kelly. We ran into each other, was it Tonight Show? Yes, Jimmy yeah. Fallon yeah. backstage. Our conversation lasted about Four seconds, but so I probably got a paragraph in. Yeah, oh, well, I spoke, on, I speak on the fast. basis of that, I've been bragging for years that you're one of my dearest friends. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I would love to be. I love that. No, I'm such a fan. I've literally, like, your whole body of work is incredible. Um, you know, you're one of those actors that really does take on, like, a true actor. You take on the character, and you're so many different people. And you know, you don't play like the same thing all the time. I feel like some people do that. No hate, just saying. Yeah. Um, but my, my favorite, though, is when I first saw you as a kid in Harry and the Hendersons, and I lived in the countryside, like, really, like, oh, at one point, we were literally in a, we lived in a shack on this farmer's land, and there was no one around except for woods. Wow. And I'm not kidding. I would, this is a real thing. It's not going to be shocking. I'm weird. I would go out looking for... For Harry, yeah. like I, I was like, I'm gonna find him. Yeah, I was like, it's yeah. gonna happen. Like I was obsessed with Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, you know how the trees like turned into Bigfoots. I know that your end. imagination runs wild yeah, when you're a yeah, kid in the that woods. Happened to yeah, you. it was a lovely experience. Yeah. Oh, Great I love film. it. Well, Footloose is 40th anniversary. That's crazy. Yeah. That's another huge film you're part of. I heard that you were actually the troublemaker on set, which is a nice juxtaposition of your character. Who so. told you? That? Yes. Well, I hear yeah. that you are the prankster. Well, yeah. Diane Weist and I were the married couple, and uh, I was the very conservative uh, preacher in town who wouldn't let people dance. Uh, I was the stern disciplinarian, and we were the oldsters. I mean, we were about 35 years old, but everybody, <laughs> everybody else, Sarah Jessica Parker, Lori Singer, they were all kids. Yeah. And we were kind of uh, defiant. We, we decided to, be, to, to cut loose. Yeah. I, ha I held all the big parties in my Motel 6 motel room. Classy. And Classy. one night, Diane and I, God help us, we tore off all our clothes and dived into the motel swimming pool. Skinny dipping, yes. And skinny dipping. We completely appalled all these young people. <laughs> and a memo went up the next day, no more of that. Oh. We were, we were, we're going to get thrown out of Provo, Utah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that you're the older ones on set. <laughs> yeah, I like, know, causing, that's I know. amazing. Oh, that's, I would have jumped in. I love being naked. It's funny. <laughs> um, John, John's third rock co-star, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, was here and told a story about his mom messing with John. So let's see that. Okay, so this started on April Fool's. John Lithgow played a prank on everybody, and he told okay. everybody royalty is coming prince... I don't remember which prince. I don't really yeah. keep track of the rub. I don't either. And like he sent out a whole memo and like made it look very official and you have to dress nicely. And oh like my, my mom God. got me dressed up in a suit because she got the memo that Prince was coming or whatever. Oh my God. Turned out it was an April Fool's prank, right? Oh my God. So and she was, the, she was the one that, that, that like got fooled. So she went to the pet store, got a bag of live crickets, got someone to let her into John Lithgow's dressing room, and just let all the live crickets out in his room. <laughs> that is, first of all, the most elaborate, like, prank. That yeah. is, I yeah. mean, did you get in trouble for that? I hear people actually called me, like, everyone thought, like, royalty was coming. Well, the thing is, uh, Joey's mother called the NBC press department and said, nobody told me about this. <laughs> And the, their response was, nobody told us about this. <laughs> and the word went out to Entertainment Tonight and everywhere that oh. the prince was coming to, to our set. <laughs> Everybody was in a rage. I considered it a huge success. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, my God. So what, do you have, like, an all-time favorite prank? Yeah, also on Third Rock, uh, Bill Shatner came as a guest for a, a two-episode, hour-long special Third Rock. We'd already shot the first episode, and as I drove to the set on April 1st, I thought, oh, my God, I haven't planned anything. I called Bill, and I suggested that we spend the whole day bickering and sort of sniping at each other, like something is really bugging us. We made up a fake story that we were uh, arguing about. <laughs> And at about 3 p.m. at the big network run-through where we presented the show that we were going to do in front of a live audience, it exploded into this huge fight between Shatner and me. The works! This is not Star Trek! This is the third round for this! I'm not going to be able to get there! Off to our dressing rooms. Bang! I'm not coming back until that man apologizes! And, I would know. have my pants on set. Yeah. 
Well, you, you should have seen the NBC executives. You know, they, we'd already shot the first half of the show. We oh. couldn't lose Bill Shatner. And then, of course, we came out with an April Fool's cake. Oh, my God, I would Everybody hate you. Everybody was furious once again. <laughs> but Shatner considered it the best acting he had ever done. <laughs> that was great. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, you and Shatner, that whole set must have been... Yeah. They must have died. Okay, we've got to get, that's so mean, but awesome. Uh, we've got to get to some commercials. Josie and our audience is going to do the honors. Hi, Kelly and John. John, I love how your new show shines a light on the importance of arts in schools. I've been a public school teacher in New York City for yeah. 20 years. Thank you. Which means I get to play all day with the greatest students in the world. I've seen firsthand that art opportunities get kids in the door and wanting to go to school. So thanks for spreading that important message. And stay here. There's more with John and Kelly after this. Happening, obviously. What happens on Art Happens Here? Well, I go back to school again. Uh, I've been an advocate for arts education for years uh, and working with an arts commission of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and with a bunch of experts in creating reports. But I, I thought, let's get the word out in a very public way. Let's mm -hmm. partner with PBS. Yeah. And the premise I pitched was that I go back to school. I become the new kid again in four areas of the arts. Uh, ceramics, printmaking, vocal jazz ensemble. Wow. And Trinidadian Dunham Dance at the Debbie Allen Dance Academy. Yeah, love Debbie Allen. And yeah. I was the new kid in class. You know, the teachers taught the students and the students taught me. Yeah. They are trying to bring me up to their level. Uh, and I basically made a fool of myself for a month. I, I know, but uh, you know what? Art is so important in schools. It's what kept me in, the, like she said, it kept me in the school. I was not yeah, great exactly. at the curriculum. I was not great. I was not that kind of student yeah. that was good to sit at a desk and do worksheets. Yeah. But uh, being a part of the art programs, you had to make a certain average. So it's what kept my grades up. Yeah, and at this point, with so many millions of kids having been robbed of two years of education, in-person yeah. education and social development, uh, it was. It just seemed like the perfect thing to do. Mm -hmm. There's this terrible crisis of absenteeism since the pandemic, and you think, how in the world do we uh, address some of such a uh, intractable problem? Well, you've got to make kids eager to get back to school. There's nothing like their own creative expression to do that, mm -hmm. and that's sort of the message of this piece. Yeah, and it worked like the dream. I mean, the kids are the stars of this show. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a polemic. It's, it's so important. It's a great time to do it. Yeah. I agree with you. So what you learned, you said, is it Caribbean African dance? It's called Dunham Dance. Were you good? On... I was terrible. <laughs> but, but like a funny but terrible? But I got better, you know. OK. I, I never did get good, but I was. There, there. You see me? Hey, look at the <laughs> shoulder, shoulder. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I you had the shoulders going. Those yeah. are excellent shoulders. Yeah. Look at him. He's practicing before he's going out. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. you have dance experience, though, like with ballet, oh, right? Oh, I've danced. Yes. As a matter of fact, I love to say this sentence. I have danced with the New York City Ballet. Yeah, that's incredible. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, I, yes I, I played the elephant in Christopher Wheeldon's uh, production of, of Saint-Saëns' <laughs> Carnival of the Animals. There you see. That's me in the middle. Oh my God. Yeah, dressed like, see, see, dressed like Dame Edna. There you go. <laughs> Edna is. There's a lot going on with Edna up top, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So, I, 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 I didn't know there was any uh, video of that. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> We're an incredible show. I thought, I thought, we will find it. I thought I'd managed to bury that. No, <laughs> don't bury that. I like that. No, so you had to have grown up in such like an artistic household, right? Well, I grew up in a theater family. My, okay. my father was a regional theater producer, director, actor. So yeah. mainly Shakespeare festivals in Ohio, the Great Lakes Theater Festival in Cleveland is. Yeah. He started it 60 years ago. Uh, that's it's, me. 
That's it's so me. cool that you said you started it. Our executive producer actually grew up in Ohio. She grew up going to that. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We she... found that out backstage. Yeah, I was like, you have no idea the and impact of that. And that's me and my sister. I was Mustard Seed. She was Moth in yeah. uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. So yeah, I grew up, but actually I grew up not wanting to go into the family business, not wanting to be an actor, but really? to be an artist. And that's that too has a lot to do with art happens here. Yeah. I was just trying to recreate the excitement of that experience. Great art instruction in Akron Public Schools. Yeah, speaking of art um, as well, you, I hear draw and paint, you still do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing, I've always but wanted I'm, to be able to draw. But I'm just a hobbyist. If I had become an artist, I'd be really something. Ah, look, you have this. I did this and put it on This Instagram. is a hobby. Okay, this And would, I'm doing a portrait of a certain friend of mine who Bridget. appears That's with Bridges, me right? in, yeah. the, in The Old Man yeah. on FX. That's not with... a hobby, dude. That's just that's just <laughs> really great. <laughs> I would love to draw. I found these things. I didn't know my grandmother, but I found these things, and she was a really great artist, and oh, mainly animals. That. But that's incredible. I've always wanted to do that. Like, yeah. it's such an incredible thing to sit down and be able to my do that. My dear friend Jeff Bridges. Yeah. I, I hope you recognized him. We recognized him. You're incredible <laughs> at it. You're being so humble. All right, I'll brag for you. Um, we have to stop for a short commercial break. John's special is called Art Happens Here. You can catch it on PBS.